Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh, being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh, and God the Son, and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Rakakodash, meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit, divine to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect that's got it brought to the four corners of the earth, which are you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. And Shalom to you speckled birds and your Israelite foreigners that's scattered out there in other nations that look like other nations, but are in fact Israelites, all right? You know, those of you who you see on this 12 tribes chart, you know, you are the true children of Israel, all right? You know, the chosen of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? So we are here once again in the highways, and the byways, you know, to uh, feed the flock, to feed the sheep that are uh, as commanded of us men, all right? You know, so, you know, in this lesson, you know, I'm going to go into uh, how now is not the time to be tarrying to turn to the Lord, all right? Because we have a lot of our people that are taking their, you know, their precious time, you know, to return back to the Lord, all right? Despite seeing all the things that's taking place in the earth, you know, they're, they're putting off day to day, you know, turning back to the Lord and repenting, all right? You know, that's a dangerous thing to do, you know, because the scripture says the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, all right? You know, you even have some people that's in this truth right now that uh, know that they're Israelites, but they ain't willing, they ain't ready to do what is commanded of them once they wake up to this truth, all right? You know, you have lukewarm Israelites that's in this truth. You know, they're still out here, you know, celebrating birthdays, you know, still out here uh, in the Christian church, you know, eating pork, you know, so on and so forth. You know, it's a numerous things, but, you know, right now it's not the time to be making, to be tarrying to turn back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, it's not the time to be being lukewarm because we are in the times of judgment and great judgment is going to come upon the whole earth, all right? And the scriptures talk about how judgment is going to begin out the house of Israel, so that's why it's important for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians to return back to your true power, all right, to repent, all right, because we don't have much longer, all right? So to start off with, I want to get Ecclesiastes, no, Ecclesiastes chapter eight, and let's start at verse 11, all right? And it says, because the sentence against evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil, all right? And that's exactly why you have a lot of our people, you know, tarrying to turn back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, that's why you have a lot of people, a lot of our people are uh, being lukewarm because the sentence against evil works is not executed speedily. All right, so they think they can continue in their life by doing whatever they want, you know, doing this and doing that, and they think judgment won't come to them. All right, you know, you know, I'm not gonna say the sister's name, but uh, you know, I was recently just talking to uh, a sister. You know, she's struggling with the, uh, you know, with the, uh, I'm trying to say it in a way so that uh, YouTube's algorithm won't pick it up. But, you know, she's struggling with, uh, you know, being a, uh, being a homo, all right? She's, she's struggling with being bi, all right? And, you know, she knows that it's not right to uh, be that way. So I pretty much told her that, you know, to get that demon off of you, you need to pray, you know, and fast. You know, that's the only way that you can get that demon up off of you. And her response was, you know, I'll get to it eventually, you know, and that's a, that's, a, that's a mindset that a lot of our people have. You know, I'll repent eventually, you know, I'll do it when I feel like it, not realizing that, you know, you might not ha have, a, have another day to repent. You know, it's a lot of people that went to sleep last night thinking that they was gonna be here the next day and they didn't wake up. You know, they don't have the chance to repent now, all right? You know, so don't let that be you because judgment can rain upon you at any moment. All right, you know, because we are in the times of great death. Great death is coming to the earth right now, you know? And it's all the doing of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is reigning judgment on the wicked right now, all right? So, this is verse 12, and it says, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which fear before him, all right? So those that fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, they're going to be good. But those that don't, 
those that want to continue and tarrying to turn back to Yahweh Bashim El Shai, you know, those that want to tarry and uh, those that want to be lukewarm, it's not going to be well with them, all right? Because judgment is going to come upon them. You know, Yahweh Bashim El Shai has stretched forth his hand to you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, but you didn't want to take the opportunity to repent so you could be on his good side, all right? So that's why judgment is coming to you, all right? You know, so this is uh, verse 13. He says, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before Yahweh Bashim was shot. All right? You know, so if you don't fear Yahweh Bashim was shot, if you're going to continue to tarry, you know, to turn back to him, if you're going to continue to be lukewarm, all right, your days won't be prolonged, and judgment is going to rain upon you at a time that you least expect it. All right? So now I'm going to get Revelation chapter 3. Because it's going to go into how, you know, if you're a lukewarm, you know, your Yahweh Bashim El Shai is going to spew you out of his mouth, all right? You know, meaning he's not going to deal with you, you know? When you spew something out your mouth, you know, you kind of spit like, oh, that's nasty. That's how he's going to look at you, Jakes, that's being lukewarm, all right? So, this is uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. And it says... I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou work cold or hot. So Yahweh Bashim El Shai, he would rather you to choose a side. Choose to be either cold or hot. You see, you in this truth or you out, all right? But if you in between, you're going to receive a great judgment, you know? Because the scriptures, uh, I'm roughly paraphrasing, but the scriptures talk about how, you know, uh, those that pretty much know the truth, a greater judgment will come to them, all right? Those that know the will of Yahweh Bashim El Shai and they don't do it, a greater judgment will come to them. All right? You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing, but that's why, you know, it's not a good idea to be lukewarm, especially in the times that we are in right now. All right? So this look, this is a Revelation chapter 3 and verse 16, and it says, So then, because thou art lukewarm, meaning you're right there in between, you didn't choose a side. All right? Neither, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. All right? Because you wasn't on fire for this truth and you wasn't cold either. You was right there in between straddling the fence. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to spew you out of his mouth, all right? You know, so you got to choose a side. You can't, you know, be a friend of the world and be try to be a friend of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It don't work that way, all right? The scriptures talk about how if you're a friend of the world, you are an enemy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? So you can't be a damn people pleaser out here. You know, scared because scared of what people are gonna think of you, you know, and then you can't be, you know, uh, trying to dabble in the things of this world, you know, then claiming that you're an Israelite, claiming that you know the truth. It don't work like that. You're gonna receive a great judgment. All right. Let me see if I can get that scripture right quick. Revelation chapter Like it. Give me just a second. All right, so this is uh, James chapter 4 and verse 4. And it says, So, like, I'm going to wait till these people pass by. All right, so this is James chapter 4 and verse 4. And it says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, So, like, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not the friendship of the world? Is enmity with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So the friendship of the world is enmity with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. So you can't be out here trying to straddle the fence. You know, be in the world but yet claim that you're an Israelite. You know, claim that you're serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It don't work like that. All right. You're gonna be destroyed. You know, you're gonna be destroyed. Plain and simple. So it's either you in or you're out. All right. So, with that being said, that leads me to First uh, Thessalonians chapter five. All right, because this is going going into how you know uh, pretty much you know when people saying it's peace and safety, you know great destruction is going to come upon them. All right, you know while people are being comfortable, great destruction is going to come upon them, and that's exactly what's going to happen. The majority of our people are comfortable. 
right now. Not paying attention to what's going on. Not, not even concerned about repenting. All right? You know? So great destruction is getting ready to come upon this place. You know, Babylon the Great. All right? So this is... Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1 and it says but, the, but of the times and, and the seasons brethren ye have no need that I write unto you verse 2 for, you, for, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night alright so those of us that's in this truth you know paying attention to prophecy and watching we know that we know perfectly that the day of the Lord is going to come as a, as a thief in the night alright verse 3 for when, shall, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, all right? You know, so right now, our people are comfortable. They think they have peace and safety right now because, you know, they're still able to live their life, all right? They're still able to go to the grocery store right now, you know, go to their favorite restaurants, so on and so forth, you know. They're, they're still able to go to their nine to five. You know, they think it's peace and safety right now. You know, but if they was paying attention to the news, they'll see that great destruction is on the way. All right. You know, wars and rumors of wars between America and China is viewing up right now. All right. China keeps sending these uh these uh balloons over here to spy out and scope out America, all right? But our people are not paying attention to the time, all right? Great destruction is getting ready to come upon this place. You know, it's gonna come as a thief in the night, and it's gonna come at a time when you're feeling like you're in your peace and safety, all right. So, this is uh, verse 4, and it says, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should not overtake you as a thief, all right? So those of us that sincerely in this truth, you know, it's not going to overtake us as a thief because we're paying attention. You know, we're paying attention to prophecy. You know, the scriptures tell us to measure the time diligently. So that's exactly what we're doing right now, all right? You know, we're paying attention to prophecy and you know, whatnot, you know? So that day is not going to overtake us as a thief in the night, all right? Verse, uh, verse 5, and it says, Ye who are children of the light and the children of the day, we are not the, we are not of the night nor of darkness, all right? Because we're in this truth, you know? We're not in darkness. We see what's going on out here, all right? But our people that still out there in the world, you know, not tarrying to come back to Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, they're in darkness right now. All right, they don't know what the hell is going on. All right, they don't know what the hell is going to overtake them very soon. All right, verse six. Therefore, let us not sleep as others, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. All right. So you're supposed to be watching, paying attention to prophecy. You know, watching the news, reading articles, so on and so forth. All right. You know, it says, and it, go, it says, you know, let us not sleep as others do, because the majority of our people they're asleep right now. All right, they're literally the walking dead, you know, because they don't understand what's going on. All right, but ultimately, it's because Yahweh Bashim Al Shai uh, put that spirit of blindness on them. All right, let me see if I can get that right quick. Because it's not meant for all of us to uh, understand this truth. All right, so like, give me a second. I believe that's in Romans chapter seven. I believe. No, Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. So like, all right, so this is Romans chapter 11 and verse 7, and it says, What then? Israel hath not obtained which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. All right, so the elect, the elect of Israel hath obtained his truth. All right, verse, uh, let's continue. And the rest were blinded. All right, so the rest were blinded. You know, it's not meant for all of us, all of Israel, to understand his truth. Only the elect is going to understand it, all right? Now, verse uh, eight, is, 8 is the point, and it says, According as it is written, Yahweh Bashim Shai has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, until this day, all right? So that's why, you know, a lot of our people don't understand this truth, all right? That's why a lot of times when you read 
a scripture that's plain upon tables, that's word for word and verbatim, you know, our people still don't understand it because the Bible is a spiritual book. You know, it's not meant for all of our people to understand it, all right? You know, only the elect is meant to understand it, but the rest were blinded, all right? Point blank, period. So I just want to bring that out for edification purposes. So let's go ahead and get back to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and uh, verse 7. And it says, For they that sleep in the night, and they and they and they that be drunken or drunken in the night, all right? So you're not supposed to be like those that's uh out here, you know, sleepwalking, all right, not paying attention to what's going on, all right? Because ultimately that's gonna lead to their destruction. So now when I get Ecclesiastes chapter five, and it's gonna lead me to the point of this whole lesson, all right? Not tarrying to turn back to uh Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and get that right quick. So this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter five and verse two. And uh, it says, follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart. All right, so we're not supposed to follow our heart because why our, our heart is, is deceitful above all things and it's wicked all right let me get there right quick all right that's uh jeremiah chapter 17 and verse in verse 9, he says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? All right? So that's why you're not supposed to uh, follow your heart. To uh, Yeah, as uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 2 says, You know, it says, Follow not thine own mind and thy strength, and to walk in the ways of thy heart. Because as we just read, our heart, meaning our mind, is desperately wicked. Nobody can know it. All right? Verse 3, And say not, who shall control me for my works? For the Lord will surely revenge thy pride, all right? And our people are very prideful, all right? You know, when we tell our people that judgment is getting ready to come upon the earth, you know, they don't believe it, you know? So this scripture right here, you know, describes them to a T. Let's read it again. And it says, And say not who shall control my works, control me for my works, for the Lord will surely revenge thy pride, all right? So if you're prideful, thinking that judgment won't come upon you, right? You know, the Lord is going to revenge you, all right? He's going to bring sudden destruction upon you, all right? Verse 4, say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? For the Lord is long-suffering, he will in no wise let thee go, all right? You know, the scriptures talk about how, you know, the sentence against uh, evil works is not executed speedily, all right? I'm going to get that in just a second, but that's why our people are so quick to continue and their sins, all right? You know, because, you know, nothing has happened to them yet. You know, but very soon, they're gonna see that, you know, the brothers, the men that's out here on the highways and the byways, on YouTube, so on and so forth, was just simply trying to warn them, all right? They're gonna see that they was telling the truth, you know? As Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 33 says, you know, it's gonna come a time when they're gonna realize that a prophet was among them, all right? Let's continue. Verse 5, concerning the propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin, all right? You know, so that's why you, sh you can't be out here, you know, tarrying to turn back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Because if you are, you're going to continue to add sin unto sin. Then eventually, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to be like, you know what, that's enough. All right, he's going to take your ass off, all right? So let's continue. Verse 6, and say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins, for mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation rests upon sinners. All right? So you're not supposed to take Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's mercies for granted. All right? Yeah, it's true. He's he's very merciful. But at a point in time, you're going to be like, enough is enough. He's going to bring great judgment upon you. All right? You know, the time that you least expected. So let's go ahead and get there right quick. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 7, and it says, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly 
shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance all right and you know this is the wrong time to you know have that mindset because right now you know it may seem like everything cool but that's the time that you need to be worried you know this is the quiet before the storm all right you know when that storm is viewing up you know world war three is viewing up jacob's trouble is viewing up all right so this is not the time to be setting your ways and tarrying to turn back to your whole bunch of side all right so uh, now I want to get I want to get uh, James chapter four and verse thirteen because I, I, like I said, you know the sister that I was talking about, you know she's dealing with that uh, that uh, that bi demon, you know what I'm saying I got to say it that way so YouTube won't you know take the video down. You know she's dealing with that, but when I told her she needs to just pray it off and fast and stuff so on and so forth she pretty much just said you know i'll get to it eventually you know and that's not the mindset to have because the scripture says you're not supposed to boast and uh boast in uh and tomorrow you know roughly paraphrasing but you know you're not supposed to just say that you know you act like you're going to have tomorrow to repent because you know the lord can take you out at any given time all right so uh this is james chapter four and uh, let's start at verse 13. And it says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Verse 14. Whereas ye know not that, so like, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even as vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth and then vanish the way. All right, so you're not supposed to have a mindset that, you know, I'll do this, I'll do that tomorrow. You know, I'll repent tomorrow, you know, this, that, another, because your life is like vapor. You know, it's here for a minute, then the next minute it's gone, all right? You know, meaning the Lord can take your ass out at any moment. And that's what's been happening to a lot of these celebrities lately, all right? Your favorite rappers. You know, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that at one point in time, you know, they heard this truth, you know, but they didn't want to take heed to it, all right? So the Lord took them out at a time that they least expected it, all right? And you're gonna keep seeing more and more today amongst your favorite celebrities. So this is uh, James chapter four and verse 15, and it says, for, the, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that, all right? So that's why a lot of times you hear a brother saying, Lord will not do this, or our Lord will not do that, because we don't know if we're gonna be here tomorrow, all right? same way that you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow to repent all right so with that being said let's get uh so lucky i want to get the scripture that talks about how the uh, the sentence against evil works is not executed speedily No, Salaki, I'm thinking about a whole different scripture. I'm thinking about a whole different scripture, Salaki. But uh, yeah, I want to get Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. All right. And it says, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. All right. So that's going into how, you know, you have brothers that's out here in the highways and the byways laboring. All right. Week in and week out. All right. Wisdom is crying out in the street, you know, to get you brothers and your sisters to repent you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians to repent and to turn back to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right? Verse uh, 14, no, so like in verse 21. She crieth in the cheap places and concourse in the openings of the gate in the city. She uttered her words saying, all right? And that's what you have brothers out here. You know, we're in the cheap concourse places, all right? You know, we're out here in the opening where people could see us, all right? You know? We're being made a spectacle. You know, the scripture's talking about how, you know, we're made a spectacle to all nations and whatnot, you know? People drive by, you know, and walk by and they look at us like we're crazy, you know, for teaching and preaching to the preaching his word, all right? Verse uh, 22. No, let's read verse 21 again. It says, She cried in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates 
in the city, she uttered her words saying, verse 22, how long be simple ones will you love some Christmas? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge, all right? And that's exactly what brothers be saying when we are here, you know? We we're saying how long you simple ones gonna love simplicity? How long you gonna love the things of this world? You know, how long is it gonna be before you turn back to your Bashim Yahweh Shai and repent? All right? Verse 23. Verse 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And that's exactly what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has done in these last days, all right? You know, he has made his words known unto his elect. Verse 24, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, all right? So this is what's gonna happen, you know, since Yahweh Bashim Yahweh has stretched out his hand to you, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, and he didn't want to take heed, this is what's gonna happen, all right? Verse 25, but ye have set and knock at all my counsel, and with none of my reproof. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear coming. All right, so when Jacob's trouble hit, when it's in full effect, all right, you just that didn't want to take heed to this word, all right? You know, when people out here in the streets, you know, knocking people off because you got some food and they need some food because it's going to be a famine, you know? When people are out here breaking into your house trying to get what you got, you know, when you women out here getting ravaged, like the scripture says, you know, because you didn't take heed to this word, you know, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is gonna laugh at you, all right? You know, you're gonna call on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah in that day, but he's not gonna hear you. Because when, when repentance was open unto you, you know, you didn't wanna take that chance. You didn't wanna take heed, all right? So this is what's gonna come to you. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is gonna laugh at you, all right? Verse, uh, Verse 27, when your fear cometh as a as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, and when distress and anguish cometh upon you. All right, so when you're, you know, uh, you know, when destruction come upon you, you know, when you're struggling, all right, you know, when you're hungry because there's no food out here, all right, he's gonna laugh at you because you didn't take heed to this word. All right. So this is uh verse, this is verse uh 28. So like this is verse 28 it says then shall they call upon me and i will not answer they shall seek me early but they shall not find me all right because you didn't take heed to to this word when you had the chance you know you're going to call upon him you're going to call upon you how about but he's not going to hear you all right that's why the scriptures say you know seek the lord while he may be found you know let me get there right quick uh All right, so this is Isaiah chapter 55 and verse six. All right, and it says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. Verse seven, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And unto our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, for he will abundantly pardon. All right, so the scripture says, you know, seek the Lord while he may be found because it's telling you that it's going to be a time when he's not going to be able to be found, all right? Because the man, the Lord, you know, when all hell is breaking loose, we're not going to be out here on the streets no more teaching, all right? You know, the internet is going to be shut down, so you can't go to YouTube, you know? So you're going to be shit out of luck, all right? You had the chance to repent. You had the chance to get this word, but you didn't take uh, advantage of it. So now you got to eat the, uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta lay in the bed that you made, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and get back to the, uh, Proverbs. So this is uh, Proverbs chapter 1. And let's read verse 28 again. It says, They shall call upon me, and I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. All right? Same thing that we just read in Isaiah 55. You know, seek the Lord while he may be found. Because it's going to come a time when, he's, when you're not going to be able to find him. All right? You know? Verse uh, 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, you know, and that's uh, that's how majority of our people is. You know, our people don't fear you. How about Shemuel Shai? And they hate knowledge. All right, they care about what the, uh, they they care about the Super Bowl that's going to take place right now. All right, you know, 
you know, the, the typical Negro is still talking about the Grammys that took place the other day, you know, so on and so forth. They hate knowledge, but they're so concerned in the simplicity things, all right? The things that don't matter, the vain things, all right? Verse 31. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and, they, and be filled with their own devices, all right? So it goes back to what I just said. You know, you wicked jakes, you know, they don't want to take heed to the word. You're going to have to lay in the bed that you made, all right? You know, you want to continue to be wicked when you've been warned over and over again, all right? Cool. But now you're going to have to lay in the bed that you just that you made, all right? Which is why the scripture says, therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way, all right? Verse 32, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them, all right? You know, the turning away of the simple is going to slay you because you don't want to take heed to this word, all right? You know, whenever somebody told you the truth and tried to get you to repent, you know, you just turned your head. You didn't, you kept walking, all right? You didn't want to take heed. You didn't want to stop and listen to what was being said, you know? And then the prosperity of fools, you know, is going to destroy them, as we just read. You know, our people think because they're prospering a little bit in the society, you know, that they're on some type of level, all right? But they don't realize that very soon, you know, this place is going to come crashing down, all right? You know, very soon the dollar is losing its value, you know? So, you know, our people are going to be greatly humbled very soon, all right? Because, you know, they think they have peace and safety right now, you know? So uh, let's continue. Verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear from fear of evil. All right? You know, so if you take heed to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, you know, keep the law, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability, and first and foremost, the faith, all right? You know, you have to have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. But if you do all that, you know, you're going to dwell safely in the times that we are coming into, all right? So, now I want to get um, Isaiah chapter 65, all right, because this is going to go into how, you know, in the times that we're coming into, you know, those that serve Yahweh Bashim Yahushai sincerity, you know, when it's a famine out here, when all hell is breaking loose, you know, when we're being pilgrims upon the earth, you know, the Lord's elect is going to eat, you know, and those that didn't serve the Lord, they're going to be hungry, all right? Those that didn't have a, and those that, uh, you know, so on and so forth. I don't want to butcher the scripture. Let me just read it. So, um, this is Isaiah chapter 65, and verse, uh, let's start at verse 1. And it says, I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold, be, I said, behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. Verse 2. I have spread out my hands all the day until we're rebellious people. All right, now speaking of us, you know, scripture says that we are a stiff-necked people, meaning we're rebellious, all right? So this is talking about the nation of Israel, which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. All right, and that's exactly what we're doing today. You know, we're walking in a ways that's contrary to how about Shimei was shot. We're doing what we feel like, what we feel is right, you know, so on and so forth. And that's gonna lead us to our destruction. Verse 3, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificing in gardens to like it. Verse 3, a people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face, that sacrifice that sacrificing in gardens and burneth incense upon altars. Verse 4, which remain among the graves and lodge in the mountains, and which eat swine's flesh and brought abominable things in their vessels. Verse five, which say, stand by thyself, come not near me, for I am holy, holier than thou. These are, a, these are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day, all right? So because we did wicked things like that, because that's what our people were doing back, in those, back, in, back then in, those, in the ancient days, you know, we're serving idols, we're doing wicked things, you know, that's why the curses came upon us and we are where we are right now. And ultimately, that's gonna be the reason why, you know, a lot of our people are gonna be destroyed in these times to come, all right? Because they're doing things that's contrary to the ways of Yahweh Bashim Shimei Verse six, and it says, Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but, I, but will recompense, even recompense unto their bosom, all right? 
So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is going to bring great judgment upon those that's being wicked. All right. He's no longer about to keep silent because for many years he kept silence because he's long suffering. But we are in a time where he is fed up and he's going to bring great judgment upon these other nations. All right. Starting with Esau, Edom, and then two thirds, the two thirds of the Israelites. All right. Because Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 and 9 says two thirds of our people are going to perish. But one third is going to be uh, uh, delivered, all right? So, this is uh, verse 7. And it says, Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, said the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemy, blasphemy me upon the hills. Therefore, I will measure their former work into their bosom. Verse 8. Thus said the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, one saith, destroy it not. For a blessing is in it. So what will I do with for my servant's sake that I will not destroy them all? Alright. So Yahweh Bashim Al Shah has a particular cluster that he's going to preserve, all right? Which is the elect. You know, he's not going to destroy them. But the rest of Israel he's going to destroy, which is the two-thirds. Alright? Verse 8. No, verse 9, Salaki. And I will bring forth a seed out of Jacob and out of, uh, and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains. And my elect shall inherit it, and my servant shall dwell there. All right. So the elect is going to be delivered. You know, you know the elect is going to reap the uh, benefits of uh, serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. Verse eight. Uh, no, Salaki. Verse ten. And Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Akor a place for the herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought. All right. So those that serve y'all by Shem Yahweh Shai and sincerity, you know, we're going to receive the blessings. We're going to be blessed and rewarded. All right. Verse 11. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that truth, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Verse 12. Therefore I will number you unto the sword. So like, therefore I will number you to the sword. And he shall bow down to the slaughter, because when I called, he did not answer, and when I spoke, when I spake, he did not hear, but did evil before my eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. All right, because of because you know you two thirds, you know you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. All right, you know you chose to do everything that was contrary to your Yahweh Shai. You're going to be numbered to the slaughter. All right, you know it's going to be a bloodbath there amongst you, Jakes. You know, they didn't want to take heed to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right? Verse 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord power, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right? So, as you see, great benefits are coming to those that serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right? You know, when it's a famine out here, you know, you know the elect is going to eat. You know, you know, when, you know, it's hard to get clean water, you know, when it's hard to get water, period, you know, the elect is going to be filled up, you know, but those that didn't, uh, didn't listen to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you're going to be thirsty, all right? And the wick, the elect is going to rejoice, and those that, you know, didn't want to take heed, you know, you're going to be ashamed because you're going to realize that, you know, a prophet was among you trying to warn you and trying to lead you to the right path, all right? Now, uh, verse 14, it says, Behold, my servant shall rise, for my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. All right? So you jakes that don't want to take heed to the word, all right? You know, you're going to suffer in these times to come, all right? You know, you're going to cry. You're going to be, uh, you're going to have a sorrowful heart, all right? Vexation of spirit, you know? So uh, now I want to get Second Edris, chapter sixteen. And let's start at verse thirty-seven. All right, and it says, "Behold, the plagues draw nigh, and yet and are not slack." All right, and, you know this place is being hit up, you know, with great plagues. All right, you know this, the economy is collapsing. You know you have a food shortage that's coming. All right, you know wars and rumors of wars are on the horizon. You know, so on and so forth, many other things. So these plagues are upon spiritual Egypt. Just like plagues came upon ancient Egypt, the same thing's gonna come upon spiritual Egypt, which is America, all right? 
verse 38, and it says, matter of fact, let's start at verse 37 again. It says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Verse 38, as when a woman with a child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son with two or three hours of her birth, great pains compares her womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. All right? So that's so like whenever a woman's about to go into labor and have birth, she has contractions back to back. All right. You know, she starts having contractions, you know. She'll be in pain the next minute, you know, the pain might lift up a little bit. You know, then she's in pain again. Then it might lift up again. You know, so on and so forth. You know, but then eventually, you know, those pains are gonna start happening back to back to back. All right. So, you know, that's the same way it's gonna be with the plagues that's coming upon this place, all right? You know, you know, sometimes it may seem like, you know, a lot is going on, then things might die, die down a little bit, all right? Then things might, you know, grew up again, then it might die down a little bit. But, you know, as you see right now, things have been happening back to back, all right? You know, so we are in the midst of those birth pains right now, all right? Verse, uh, verse 39, even so shall not the place be slack come to come, come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side, all right? So yeah, like I said, you know, the place is gonna come upon the earth is gonna be the same as birth pains, all right? You know, contractions, you know? Eventually the, the birth pains is gonna happen back to back to back. It's not gonna slack at all, you know? And you're, we're seeing that right now. When you turn on the news, it's always something new, all right? You know, it's something back to back. It's something new every day, you know? Verse 40. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to die battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. All right? You know, so it's going to be just like uh, the book of Eli. When Eli, he had to be a pilgrim upon the earth to make it to his destination. All right? You know, so it's going to be the same way with us. All right? We're going to be in some, we're gonna be in some times like, you know, like the walking dead. You know, like I am legend. So on and so forth. All right? You know? But our people... Our people think we're just, you know, saying things, fear mongering, when we tell them that these things are coming upon the earth, all right? You know, so on and so forth. Verse, uh, now I wanna get Second Ezra chapter nine right quick. It's a lot. All right, so uh, this is Second Ezra chapter nine, and let's start at verse seven. And it says, and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed, all right? So that's how you're gonna be able to escape the things that's coming upon the earth. You know, the typical Jake, you know, they think that, you know, you're gonna be able to escape the things that's coming upon the earth by loading up on ammo, you know, getting different weapons, you know, stocking up on food, drinks, so on and so forth, you know? But that's not gonna help anything if you're not serving how about Shemel was shot, all right? You know, you're pretty much stocking all that stuff up for the elect, you know? Because in these days to come, people are gonna be taking things from you because there's gonna be a lack of food, a lack of uh, necessary needs and whatnot, you know? So you're just stocking up for the elect. Verse, uh, verse eight. Matter of fact, let's start verse seven again. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith where you where, whereby ye have believed. Verse eight, shall be preserved from the said pearls and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. All right? So that's how you're gonna be uh, preserved, you know, from the said pearls, by serving Yahweh by Shemel Shai, you know, by keeping the faith first and foremost because and without faith, it's impossible to please y'all by Shemel Shai, all right? So that's the only way to escape what's coming. You know, not by, you know, uh, stocking up on this, stocking up on that, you know, buying weapons, buying ammo. It's, it's, it's vain, you know? Because eventually, you're gonna run out of all that. Then what, you know? You see, our people don't think. You know, our people don't think farther than the tip of their nose, all right? They think that stocking up on some ammo and, buy, and stocking up on food is really gonna preserve them. It's not, all right? Verse uh, nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments, all right? So 
those of you Israelites that you know want to make tarrying to turn back to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, those of the, you Israelites that are lukewarm, you know, you know that you're an Israelite, and you know what you're supposed to be doing, but yet, you know, you're still doing the opposite. You know, you're still celebrating birthdays. You know, you're still in the Christian church. You know, you know, you're scared about, you're scared of what people that's in the world is going to think of you if you're fully in this truth. You know, you're going to dwell in torments. All right. Verse. Uh, Verse 10, for as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, all right? You know, so if you're just focused on receiving the benefits of this life, you know, you're not focusing on getting to know you how about Shimei Shai, you know, you're going to dwell in torments, all right? Verse 11, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when yet as place of repentance was open unto them and understood it still understood not but despised it verse 12 the same must know it after death by pain all right so you're going to have to you know go through extreme pain all right you're going to have to get punished all right because when repentance was opened unto you all right you know when Yahweh was you know able to be found you didn't want to seek him all right that's why the scripture says, you know, seek him while he may be found, all right? Seek him while, you know, that door of repentance and mercy is still open, all right? But when that door closed, it's closed, you know? I guarantee you back in the times of, you know, Noah, you know, he was warning people of the times that was coming, all right? People didn't believe him, you know, but when the earth starts to get flooded, people wanted to hop on board, you know, they wanted to hop on board, but it was too late. So it's gonna be the same way here, you know, in the times that we are in, all right? So, you know, uh, I want to get uh, Ezekiel chapter 33 because it talks about how it's going to come a time when, you know, our people are going to realize that, you know, a prophet was among them, all right? Because right now, you know, our people, they look at us like we're crazy, you know, like right now, you know, uh, you know, I'm out here, people driving by, they look at me like I'm crazy because of what I'm doing, you know? But then eventually, you know, they're, they're gonna realize that a prophet was among them, all right? You know, a prophet was uh, among them the whole time, all right? Verse, um, let's read Ezekiel chapter 33, and verse 33, and it says, uh, and when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet had been, been among them, all right? You know, so his brothers and sire on the highways and the byways, you know, that's preaching and teaching, you know, that's making lessons day in and day out, you know, eventually, you know, our people are gonna look back and realize like that, that was a prophet, you know? But right now they look at us, they mock us, you know, and look at us like what we're doing is foolish, you know? But it's okay because the scripture says that, you know, the, the foolishness of preaching, you know, it's pleasing unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, all right? So well, let me see if I can find that. So, uh, all right, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, verse 21, all right? And it says, For that in the wisdom of Yahweh, the world by wisdom knew not Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It pleased Yahweh by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, all right? So, right now, it may look foolish what, you know, what I'm doing, what other brothers are doing, you know, with these garments on. You know, people might look at like look at us like we're crazy or foolish, you know, but it's pleasing to you how about Shimei was shy, all right? Because ultimately what we're doing is gonna save the elect, all right? You know? So I'm gonna get one more, I'm gonna get a couple more precepts and uh, I'm gonna close this lesson out, all right? And I'm gonna go into how a famine of the word is about to come upon this place, all right? And you could, you could clearly see that by the censorship that Esau Edom, you know, is doing, all right? You know, you can't even speak of, speak on the alphabet community because if you say something about them on the internet, you know, they'll take down your uh, your videos, you know, they'll take down your, your channel, so on and so forth, all right? You know, if you speak about the small hats, the people that's pretending to be the 
children in Israel, right? You know, if you speak on them, you know, you'll be canceled, all right? Your, your channel will get taken down, all right? So you can clearly see that, you know, a famine of the word is getting ready to take place, all right? You know, so that's why it's important to seek Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai while he may be found. So, this is uh, Amos chapter, Amos chapter 8, and let's start at verse, let's start at verse 9. Yeah, let's start at verse 9, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Verse 8, Salaki, verse 10. And I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all your souls into lamentation, and I will bring sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only sun, and the end of, of as a bitter day. All right? Now, verse 11 and 12 is the point of this whole, uh, well, not the whole lesson, but it's the point that I want to make. All right? So this is Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, and it says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, Yahweh Hashem El Shai, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, you know, that's coming too, you know, but this is not talking about that type of famine, all right? Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord, all right? You know, while you do have a, a literal famine that's coming upon the earth, you know, because it's already been said that, you know, you're gonna see major food shortages, food shortages here in 2023, all right? But this scripture is not talking about that type of famine, all right? You know, it's talking about a famine of the word, all right? It's gonna come a time when, you know, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be able to hear the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right? You know, you're not gonna have brothers out here on the streets preaching and teaching no more because all hell is gonna be breaking loose and the Lord is going to take his uh, his uh, his men off the street, all right? You know, and then, like I said, you know, uh, the, 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 the internet is going to be taken down, all right? So on and so forth. So you're not going to be able to go on YouTube to get this word, all right? You know? So this is uh, verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from and from the from the north even to the east, and shall run and run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it, all right? So, uh, no, verse 13. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint of thirst, all right? And, you know, because they're not able to get this word, all right? You know, they won't have access to this word anymore, all right? So this is exactly why Yahweh Hashem al said, you know, seek the Lord while he may be found, you know, because it's gonna come a time when he's not gonna be able to found, be found. Those days of mercy is gonna be closed, all right? You know, so again, the whole point of this lesson, you know, is not to tarry to turn back to how about Shema was shot, all right? You know, because great judgment can come upon you right now, all right? You know, and ultimately it's going to come upon you in the times to come, Jacob's trouble, you know? And not, and, and you're not supposed to be lukewarm either, because if you're lukewarm, you know, your how about Shema was shot is ultimately going to spew you out of his mouth, all right? Meaning he's not going to deal with you and you're gonna be destroyed when the thermonuclear missiles come and hit this place, all right? Known as Babylon the Great, AKA America. So, you know, Lord willing, this lesson was edified to you brothers and you sisters that's out there scattered to the four corners of the earth. And as always, I wanna give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rakakwadash, double honesty to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing his truth and sincerity. Shalom.